So not long ago, right here on this channel, we had a huge debate as to whether or not a JK can safely tow a trailer on or off-road. Well, in that particular video, which was very popular and had a lot of heated comments in it, was just a discussion on the specs as to whether or not the Jeep can tow. So I've been putting a lot of thought into this and decided, you know what, let's actually put it to the test. So next weekend, me and a buddy of mine are going to be hooking up an off-road trailer behind the JK and we're going to go on an overlanding adventure to see if it's possible for it to be able to do. Before we do that, there is some modifications to a JK that needs to be done. So if you are interested in towing an off-road trailer with your JK Jeep, four-door, two-door, or your older TJs, you're gonna wanna pay attention to this video because I promise you, this is information you're gonna need. So welcome back to Jeeping for Beginners, folks. Once again, my name is Josh, and today we are actually discussing to safely towing with my JK. Now, the reason why this came up, like I said, we had a video not too long ago where we had a heated debate about this, but an opportunity has presented itself, and we're gonna get more into that later to actually use an off-road camper trailer to go overlanding. And so we are gonna put it to the test to see if it's actually capable of doing it. Now, I just wanna preface this by saying that this particular video is not geared towards the JL and the JT owners. And the reason being is because what we have to do to the JK or the older models in order to make this a safe journey, your Jeeps are already set up for it. And I'm gonna explain that as we go. So first, let's dive in to exactly what needs to change on the JK in order for us to safely tow an off-road trailer. In order to safely tow an off-road trailer with the JK, we are gonna to need to do some wiring. The reason being is because the vehicle only comes equipped with a four pin wiring harness, which is perfectly fine for most of the applications that you are going to use towing with this particular vehicle. However, if you hook up a trailer that has brakes on it, then you need to be able to control those brakes. So we are going to be installing a four pin to seven pin wiring conversion kit, as well as a brake controller and the power necessary from the battery in order to power our devices. Now, we're gonna get into detail as we go as to why we need each one of these pieces. But like I said, the reason this is not geared towards your JL and your JT owners is because your towing package on those vehicles come automatically equipped with a seven pin wiring harness. The only thing you need is a brake controller and that is plug and play in those guys. So it's actually super simple and super easy. But before we get into actually wiring my Jeep up, let's talk about the legalities and the laws as to why this is actually necessary. Now, if you have a four-door Wrangler, you know, just like we discussed in the last video, <clears throat> that the total towing capacity is about 4,500 pounds. In most states across the United States, the way the law is written is that any trailer behind an automobile on the road that has a gross vehicle weight rating. Now, gross vehicle weight rating, meaning the weight of the trailer and the maximum weight of the cargo that that trailer can carry. Gross vehicle weight rating, more than 3,000 pounds is actually required by law to have brakes installed on the trailer. Now, it does vary from state to state, but for the most part, that's about the rule. The other law is that any trailer equipped with more than one axle is required by law to have brakes. So that means that about 99% of the trailers out there that have a gross vehicle weight rating over 3,000 pounds or have tandem axles are gonna have brakes on them, and in which case, you're gonna need to control those brakes with your Jeep. That's the laws that go around it. There's always exceptions to those rules, and it really depends upon the manufacturer of the trailer. 
For example, the off-road camper that we are going to be pulling next weekend only weighs about 1,800 pounds when it's fully loaded with all the gear necessary to go off-road. So technically by law, it does not require to have brakes on it. However, because it is an off-road use vehicle, the manufacturer has chosen to install brakes on the trailer as an assist for you to make sure that you don't lose control of it when you're on a trail. So that being said, we are going to have to rewire the Jeep with a 7-pin controller and a brake controller so that we can control the off-road trailer correctly. So let's dive right in to what we need to do to get that installed on the JK. Because of the lift and tires, my Jeep doesn't actually fit all the way in the garage. So some of what we're doing is going to be outside. But when we talk about putting a 7-pin wiring harness on there, we're also going to need to talk about placement. And this is something that I really want you to consider and think about before you just go and slap it on. When you're looking at the back of the Jeep, whether you have a factory bumper or an aftermarket bumper, it doesn't matter. You gotta consider where you're going to mount this. Now in my case, I use this Jeep off-road on a regular basis. So ground clearance is something that I have to keep in mind. With the trailer, without the trailer, it doesn't matter. I didn't want the bracket to hang down in a spot where I could smack it, hit it, or potentially break it off-road. So while you're thinking about where you're going to mount it, I'm going to show you where I mounted mine. Now you can see that I have wiring hanging down. This is a factory four-pin wiring harness that I kind of moved out of the way so that from up underneath the Jeep, you can see I actually mounted it directly to the frame. Now it's easy access, trailer hitches right here, wiring right here. So that this way, when I'm not using the trailer or just cruising off-road, it is still tucked up out of the way. And if I hit anything, I'm gonna hit the bumper long before I hit the actual mount. Now, I'm not saying that that's where you have to mount yours, but I thought it was a good idea to mount mine. So now that it's actually mounted to the Jeep and it's accessible, now we got to worry about wiring it up. Now, the four pin wiring harness that Jeep provides for you basically controls brake lights and blinkers, and that's pretty much it. Now, this kit that I installed here, you can pick up at pretty much any auto parts stores. O'Reilly's Advance, AutoZone, doesn't matter. It's only about 30 bucks. But the nice thing about it is it takes half of the guesswork away. Well, we're gonna take our factory wiring harness and we're actually gonna plug it in to the new wiring harness, just like that. And now already we've got our brake lights and our blinkers already wired in. And it maintains a four pin uh, wiring right here so that if you are gonna use a lightweight trailer that requires four pin, you still have it so that this way it makes it nice and simple. Now, like I said, that's only about half of the wiring that you need. There are still four more wires in here that need to be wired up correctly in order for this thing to work. Let me show you what those wires are and what they're supposed to go to. So the blue wire, this is gonna come direct from your brake controller so that you can tell the brakes when to turn on. <laughs> The black wire, this is for a 12 volt constant power, which we got to run directly to the battery here in just a few minutes. Then you've got the other two wires. The white one already has an eyelid on it. This is to ground out the entire system, which you can pretty much pick anywhere up under the vehicle that's a solid ground in order to attach that. Finally, we've got the purple wire. Now, not all trailers are going to need this wire, which is why some consider it to be a six pin wiring. But we're gonna wire it up anyway because I know the trailer I'm gonna pull is gonna need it. This is for reverse lights. So we are gonna have to tuck this up into the frame and attach it to the tail light on the reverse signal so that our trailer, which will be equipped with reverse lights, will turn on when I put it in reverse. <clears throat> we had talked about the purple wire being connected to the reverse lights. Because we put the mount on the driver's side, it makes more sense to go to the driver's side taillight. But I also chose this side to show you guys that in here, 
This is a factory wiring harness for your four pin trailer wiring. I brought this up because if for whatever reason we are talking about your Jeep that doesn't have wiring at all, this factory wiring harness that you can pick up from Mopar is only about 80 bucks. You can pick it up and actually just snap it in place to run that four pin wiring. Highly recommend that as opposed to splicing four more wires. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna test these circuits so we figure out which one is actually for my reverse lights so I know which one we're gonna attach the purple wire to. And the easiest way to do this is just use a test light and unplug the tail light from the main wiring harness. You got four pins in here. Brake light, turn signal, uh, ground, and your reverse. So using the test light, we're just gonna test each pin. Oh, there it is. There's our reverse circuit. Now I know this because I put the vehicle in reverse, that way the light will pop on. So this fourth circuit right here, which matches this fourth circuit right here means that this white wire with the black stripe is the one that I need to connect this purple wire to in order for the reverse lights on the trailer to work. Now when wiring up for the 12 volt constant power, you can either jump directly off your fuse box if you can find a circuit that is only on when the vehicle is running, that's my recommendation, or you can come directly to the battery. In my particular case, since I do have the dual battery set up, I have an isolated battery over here, which will provide power while the vehicle is off, but does not affect the vehicle's battery. That's a different video. Anyways, to run 12 volt constant power, the harness that we got from the auto parts store is running 10 gauge wire. So I would recommend a minimum of 10 gauge wire, if not stronger, to run the lead from the battery through the Jeep down to that trailer wiring. Let's talk about placement and wiring up of your brake controller. It doesn't matter what brake controller that you buy. I'm not here recommending any particular brand. I picked up this one at an auto parts store for relatively inexpensive because this is more of a hobby than it's going to be a permanent daily day-to-day -day thing. Where you want to put it is going to be completely up to you. Most guys take these and they mount them right here so that they're up, out of the way, so on and so forth. In order to do that may require drilling holes into your dash for the mounting bracket in order to put it up there. I'm not sure I'm a real fan of that idea, again, because this is just testing a theory. Plus, I wanna be able to see what's on the screen, okay? So that I know exactly how much gain I'm sending to the brakes, and if I need to, I can actually lock up the brakes on the trailer, and I want quick and easy access to it. So I'm thinking about actually mounting it right up here just like this so that I can see it. One thing you got to remember about a brake controller is it comes pre-wired. If we are talking about JL, GT, or newer model Jeeps, this is perfectly okay. Most of them are going to be wired exactly the same. You will need a jumper harness from Mopar, which you can pick up at pretty much any Dodge Chrysler Jeep dealership for about 30 bucks. That jumper harness converts from this plug to the pre-wired plug for this controller that's already up under your dash. Like I said, super simple, very easy. You plug it in, it's done, it works, everything's fine. Now in our case, ours is not pre-wired for it. So you gotta get a separate wiring harness that is going to plug in to the brake controller. And now we've actually gotta wire up all four of these to their intended source. Power, ground, and then brake controller, so on and so forth. So I'm gonna get going on that, get this placed, and get this installed. I'm gonna show you what it looks like. I've had some guys ask, Josh, why don't you show the process of wiring everything up instead of just explaining which wire goes to what? Well, you see, I, I have a disease. And that, that disease makes it so that 
I spend way too much time on details that maybe I shouldn't spend, especially on a temporary install. Let me show you what I mean. So, to run the wiring for the trailer controller, I have removed pretty much my entire dash assembly. Let me move this out of the way here. As you can see, no gauge cluster, no dash, no anything. Why? Because OCD. I have to tuck all the wires and make everything look as factory as possible, regardless of if it is only temporary. Oh, but oh, don't worry. It gets worse. Here's the reason I don't show the wiring. Not everybody out there has OCD. Not everybody out there cares if the wiring that's in the vehicle looks like it's meant to be there or was installed by the manufacturer. So I don't show the process because I don't want you to think that this is actually that complicated because it's really not. I'm just connecting a power and ground wire to a brake controller. I just have to make sure that I don't see any of the wiring when I'm done. So anyways, let me show you what it looks like now that it's all complete. So as you can see, the extra time it took to take everything apart and put it all back together so that I could tuck those wires nice and clean, in my opinion, came out beautiful. All right, so I guess it's more of a permanent install than I thought. Hmm. Ultimately, I chose to mount it up on the dash, which is one of the reasons why it turned into quite the project that it did. Now, if you were to mount it up here and just run the wires up under the dash, it'd probably be a whole lot simpler to access everything. So you don't necessarily have to do it this way, but it is an idea. Truth of the matter is, is wiring up a seven pin trailer harness is actually pretty simple. You need to send power, you need to have reverse lights if the trailer that you're going to be towing is equipped with reverse lights and you need to have the brake controller installed. The brake controller, like I said, basically you're just running power signal back there. It's got to know when the brakes are on. Most of all of these aftermarket parts come with crystal clear directions on what color wire goes to what particular feature. I think all in, I probably spent a hundred bucks on everything that I needed in order to get this set up so I could pull an off-road trailer. So the real test is to see if the JK is actually capable of pulling an overland trailer off-road comfortably and safely. So we're gonna put that argument to rest here in just a couple of weeks. So stay tuned folks. In the meantime, my name is Josh. This is Jeeping for Beginners. If you have any questions whatsoever, don't hesitate to ask. Any comments about what you saw in today's video, you're more than welcome to put it down in the comments below, and I'll get to them just as quick as I can. Oh, and if you haven't done so, why don't you go ahead and subscribe to the channel? Currently, even though we're over 10,000 subscribers, only about 15% of the views that I'm getting is from subscribers themselves. So I know you're not subscribed and you're watching my videos. So it doesn't cost anything. Just hit the button, subscribe to the channel, support the efforts that we're trying to put here. Um, in the meantime, folks, stay safe, happy jeeping, and we will see you next time.